Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to be showing you exactly how to do the pre-trip inspection for your CDL Class A road test. If you want to pass your test the first time, you must pay close attention to this video because here we're going to show you it all, the secrets and everything. If you like this video, I want to let you know that my name is Jonathan from Driving Academy and we are the best driving school in the entire country. We have helped thousands of students so far and our mission is to help a million people get on the road to freedom. So if you're looking to get yourself into a truck driving school and you want to choose the best, just give us a call 908-525-3609. In this video, we're going to be using the help of Tony, which is our yard manager here at Driving Academy. And he's going to actually walk us through an entire inside and outside inspection of this vehicle. We're going to do a mock road test, just as if you were the one taking the test. So you get a, a unique opportunity to kind of come along and see exactly what you can expect on your CDL road test. Ready to show these guys how to pass their test, Tony? Absolutely. All right, let's get it going. So, when it comes to taking the road test, the examiner is going to read you a set of instructions. I cannot legally tell you exactly what those instructions are, so I'm gonna paraphrase. So today, we're gonna to be taking your CDO road test. You must show me from the CDO manual that you know exactly how to inspect both the inside and outside of the entire vehicle. Today we're going to be doing the entire vehicle down, uh, down the side, the front, and the back of the vehicle as well. Would you like to start on the inside or the outside, sir? Uh, today we're going to start on the inside. Alright, so let's follow him on the inside and see how well he does on his in-cab inspection. Or other people call it the air brake test. So now that we're inside the vehicle, we're ready to get started on the in-cab inspection or the air brake test. Make sure you use three points of contact when you're moving in and out of the vehicle at all times. This is going to be a stick shift vehicle, so if you are taking a stick shift vehicle for your test, it's super important that you follow every single step. If you miss one of these steps, that could be the difference between you passing and failing the actual CDL road test. Alright Tony, so let's get started whenever you're ready. Alright, so to get started here, because this tractor is a computer operated tractor in many ways, we're going to give the computer opportunity to boot up, so I'm going to turn the key to the on position. While the computer is booting up, I'm going to double check to make sure that my parking brakes are applied. I'm also going to make sure that my transmission is neutral. And now I'm going to place my foot 100% on the clutch and now I'm going to start my engine. Now that my engine is running, I'm going to slowly remove my foot from the clutch just in case for whatever reason I didn't actually find neutral. Alright, so we're in neutral. Now I'm going to Build the air pressure up into the air tanks to 120 to 140 PSI. I'm going to help that along by giving it a little gas on the accelerator. I'm going to build my RPMs up to around 1500 RPMs. And we're going to hold it there. just heard the sneeze. The, that is the governor cut out letting us know that our air tanks are now full. With that said, I'm now going to place my foot 100% on the clutch and I'm going to put the vehicle in first gear. There you go. Now that I'm in first gear, I'm now going to shut my tractor off, turn my key back on to have access to the gauges. I'm now taking my foot off the clutch. Now I'm going to release air into the brake system. By doing that, I'm going to press in both of my uh, air brake uh, knobs, tractor and trailer. Right now, I'm going to wait until the air pressure stabilizes or, or settles at 100 PSI, give or take. Once the air pressure has stabilized, uh, I am now going to wait one minute which I will have to time at my test. I will have to time it one minute and uh, cannot lose more than three PSI sitting here without my foot on the brakes. The brakes are completely released. So for training purposes only we will pass the one minute. For the road test you must wait the full minute. Alright so at the end of one minute we're going to say that we did not lose three PSI now I'm going to check the applied brake test. That means I'm going to put my foot on the service brake and I'm going to hold the service brake down. Once again, this has to be one minute, which we will time. Okay, the minute has passed. At the end of one minute, I'm going to take my foot off the brake. I did hear the governor breathe out. That let me know my foot was actually on the brake. I did not lose more than four PSI. So we're good there. 
Okay, so now we're going to check for the low air warning signal. To check for that, we're going to have to go on and off the press, on and off the brake, bring the air pressure down to around 60 PSI. We should hear the low air, and there it is. So the lights are lit up, it's around 60 PSI, that is working fine. Now we're going to check for the emergency brake test where we're going to continue to pop, we're going to continue to pump the brakes waiting for our air valves to pop out. They should pop out somewhere, here they go, they both popped out. They should pop out somewhere between 40 and 20 PSI, which they have done that, so that's working properly as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to restart the engine to build air back up into the air system. So in order to do that, I am going to put my foot on the clutch 100%. I'm now going to also put my transmission back into neutral. And now I am going to start my engine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of air, a little bit, of, a little bit of acceleration to get the air pressure up over 60 psi to shut off the low air warning signal, so I don't have to speak over it. Okay, right now I'm going to let the air pressure build up to 120, 140 PSI on its own. While it's doing that, I'm going to go over the end cab inspection. First thing I want to know is I'm going to check to make sure that my steering wheel does not have more than two inches of play. I'm also going to check that my city horn is working, my electrical horn is working. And I'm also going to check to make sure that my air horn is working. I'm also going to check to make sure that my dashboard indicators are working. So first, I'm going to turn my lights on. The dashboard indicates that the headlights and all my lights are turned on. Check my left turn signal. It's working properly. Check my right turn signal. It's also working properly. I'm also going to check my four-way flashers. They are working properly. And lastly, I'm going to check to make sure that my high beams are working. That is also working properly. Now I'm going to move right to my gauges. I have my uh, my oil pressure gauge is working properly at the at, at its normal range. I also have my water temperature gauge working properly, also at its normal range, not to exceed 200 degrees. I have my voltmeter that's also working and charging properly. I also have my air gauges which are currently building to 120 to 140 psi which that's working properly as well further out i have my windshield <coughs> excuse me i have my windshield my windshield is not damaged it is clean it doesn't have any illegal stickers or any obstructions i have my windshield wipers my windshield wipers arms and blades are operating smoothly they are not they are they are secure and they are not damaged I'm also going to check my mirrors. My mirrors are clean and adjusted. I am then going to move over to here and check that my uh, defroster and air fan, uh, defroster and heater fan is working properly. It is. I'm also going to check that my parking brakes are applied while my vehicle is parked. They are. And my shifter is secure. I'm also going to check to make sure that my clutch pedal has two inches of play. It has two inches of play. My safety equipment, I have a fully charged and rated fire extinguisher underneath my seat. Underneath my passenger seat, I have my three reflective triangles. And in the same box where the triangles are, I also have my six spare fuses. My seatbelt. It's secure, it is not ripped or frayed, it latches, adjusts, it latches and adjusts properly. Now that I've done all that, I have heard the governor sneeze letting me know that my air pressure in my tanks is, is full at 120 to 140 PSI. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to check to make sure that my brakes are actually working. By doing that, I'm going to put my foot all the way on the clutch. I'm going to put my vehicle in first gear. I am going to release my uh, tractor parking brake so I can test whether or not the trailer brake is working properly. By doing that, I'm going to come off the clutch a little bit, really slow, 
until I feel the tractor wanting to pull and it should not go anywhere. There we go. It did not move, so my trailer brake is working properly. I'm going to re-engage my tractor brake. I'm going to release my trailer brake. Now I'm going to check to see if the tractor brake is working properly. Once again, slowly off the clutch, we should not move. There it is. It pulled, but it does not. It did not move. Now I'm going to test to make sure that the service brake is working properly. So I'm going to push in my tractor and my trailer brake. My vehicle is in first gear. I am going to pull up a few feet, and then I'm going to apply the service brake. Here we go. We're going. All right. Applying my service brake. My vehicle stopped, and I did not feel the steering wheel pull from side to side. That does. Now I'm going to put my vehicle back into neutral. I'm going to reapply my parking brake. And I am going to turn my vehicle off, turn off my lights, remove my key, and let the examiner know that that concludes my in-cab and air brake inspection. So, because he completed his in-cab inspection, he did pass because he did everything correctly, and now it's time to move on to the outside. If you're thinking right now, whoa, that was way too much for me to memorize. How am I supposed to memorize all that without any paper, without any cheat sheet? Well, in that case, I definitely recommend coming in for training. You can get, definitely get trained by the best instructors in the country. Tony and his team have been trained many, many times to help out students all over the country and people just like you to help them get their CDL license. So if you are interested, give us a call 908-525-3609 because if you do mess up on one little thing in here, that could be the difference between you passing and failing this test. So now let's move on to the next part which is the entire outside inspection. Listen up and stay focused. All right, so now we're going to do the outside inspection. I want the entire vehicle inspected, which means the whole front, both sides of the engine. We're going to go down the passenger side of the vehicle this time, and then we're going to finish in the back of the trailer. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. All right, let's get started. All righty then. To get started. We're going to start. Um, we're going to start with our clearance lights. Our clearance lights are amber, which is the proper color. They are not. They are not damaged or missing. And they, are, and they are clean and functional. All right, gonna move right on down here to my headlights that are also, that are clear. Also not damaged or missing, broken or missing. They are also clear. I have turn signals on either side of my front end that they are, they are also amber. They're, not, they're clean and functional, not broken or missing. All right, underneath my tractor or trailer, I'm looking here, I don't see any puddles or dripping fluids under my engine or transmission. At this time, I'm going to go forward and pull and open the hood. If need be, you can go here, pull up, and open the hood. All right. Okay, so on this side of the engine, I'm going to check all of my hoses. I'm going to make sure that all of my hoses are in good condition and not leaking. I'm also, again, checking on the ground, looking for any puddles or dripping fluids under the engine and transmission. I'm going to check. This is my coolant reservoir. The coolant reservoir, we're going to check the sight glass to, make, to see that it has an adequate amount of coolant in here. If there was no sight glass, I would remove this cap if the engine was not hot to check to see if it has an adequate amount of coolant in here. All right? The coolant through this hose flows down to our power steering pump, which is hidden down here behind the frame. The power steering pump in this vehicle is gear driven. It's operating properly, it's not damaged or leaking, and it is mounted securely. That's all the stuff on the engine compartment on this side. I'm going to go over to the engine compartment on the other side. Okay, now that we're on this side, once again, I am going to check all of my hoses to make sure they're in good condition and not leaking. I'm going to check on the ground again to make sure there's no puddles or dripping fluids under the engine and transmission. I'm going to check. This is my power steering fluid. The power steering fluid should be at a safe operating range. I'm going to see that either through the, the sight glass or through the dipstick which lives underneath this cap. Power steering fluid flows all the way down behind the frame back here to my power steering pump. A power steering pump 
It's gear driven, operating properly, it's not damaged or leaking, and it's mounted securely. This is my power steering box. My power steering box is mounted securely. It's not leaking. There's no missing nuts or bolts. And I'm going to check the hoses on the power steering box to make sure that they are not damaged or leaking. And I have my steering linkage, which consists of my arm, my link, and all the way in the back, I have a little guy back here called the rod. My arm, my link, and my rod, those parts themselves are not worn or cracked. The way they are connected to one another, this is a joint, this is a socket, the joints and sockets are not worn or loose. And we are not missing nuts, bolts, and cotter keys. By the way, it's two sets of those guys. It's set here, and it's a set back here. All right. Also, we're gonna check my engine oil. This is my engine oil dipstick. We would use this when the engine is off. The engine oil should be at a safe operating range and above the refill mark. Hidden behind this dipstick right here is my alternator. My alternator is belt driven. It's operating properly. It's not damaged or leaking. And it is mounted securely. And because it is belt driven, I would then check the belt. I would then check the belt. At the center of the belt, it should have a snugness of half inch to three quarter inches of play at the middle. The belt should not, have, not be cracked, frayed, have loose fibers, signs of wear. Okay. Back here, these colorful hoses here, they lead to my air compressor. My air compressor is gear driven, operating properly, not damaged or leaking, and it is mounted securely. And that concludes everything under the engine. So if you are interested in seeing exactly how to know everything under your engine specifically, give our office a call, 908-525-3609. We're here to help you out, either on your truck or on our truck. The cool thing about being a student here at Draven Academy is that when it comes to the training, you're actually going to get tested by one of our staff members as well at our own third-party testing site. So we got 11 items to check in this engine. Let's see how many more items we have to check on this entire part of the vehicle. So we're going to go to the other side and we're going to do the suspension, brakes, and tires, okay? Okay. Okay. So what we have, I'm going to start with the suspension first. So this is my spring hanger right here. The spring hanger should not be cracked or broken. It should be securely mounted to the frame with no loose or missing bolts. It's holding up my leaf springs. My leaf springs should not be missing, shifted, cracked, or broken. Inside here where the leaf springs broke both up there are bushings that, I, that should not be missing or damaged. All right. Holding my leaf springs down. I have U-bolts. U-bolts should not be broken, loose, or missing, and they are securely mounted to the axle. Right next to my U-bolts, I have my shock absorber. My shock absorber should be secure with no leaks. Again, it has bushings in the top and the bottom that should not be missing or damaged. Okay. We also have our brake system over here. Here's my slack adjuster and push rod. They should not be broken. They should not have broken, loose, or missing parts. They should not move more than one inch when the brakes are released when pulled by hand. This is my brake chamber. The brake chamber should not be cracked, dented, or leaking. It should be secure with clamps not loose or missing. I also have brake hoses, lines, and couplings that should not be cracked, worn, or leaking. I also have brake drums, which you can see a little bit from the inside here. Uh, the brake drums should not have any cracks, dents, or holes. There should not be any loose or missing bolts, and it should not have any contaminants back there, such as debris, oil, or grease. Also back here, we have our brake lining. The brake lining, should, where visible, should not be worn dangerously thin. And that would be everything inside of there. So now we're going to move out on the outside here to our tires. Tires tread depth. This is a steering axle tire. So the tread depth on a steering axle tire should be a minimum of 430 seconds. 
this tire should be evenly worn. It should not have any cuts or damage to the tread or the side walls. The valve cap and stem, which is located right here, should not be missing, broken, or damaged. The air pressure in this tire should be between 90 and 100 PSI, which we would confirm with an air gauge or a tire gauge. This is our rim. The rim should not be bent or damaged, should not have weld repairs. We're also going to look for rust trails that may indicate the rim is loose. This is our hub seal. The hub seal should not be leaking. And if I had a side glass, I would check for adequate oil level in here. These guys right here are our lug nuts. The lug nuts should all be present. We're going to check for looseness, such as rust trails or shiny threads. Our bolt holes should also not be cracked and distorted. The, bolt, the lug nuts shouldn't be cracked and distorted, nor should the bolt holes be cracked and distorted. That's it for our tire and our rim. Good job. So as you can see here, we're going to have the tires, the brakes, and suspension all under one section. This is the most important part of the entire test for the simple reason is, have you ever heard of the term 18-wheeler? Which means if you do have 18 wheels, you have to do the same exact inspection on all 18 of your tires. To come and be a student here at Driving Academy, we're not going to make you do it all 18 different times. We're going to show you a shortcut on exactly how to shorten it up to make sure that you pass your road test even faster than you have to. So, let's continue, Tony. Okay, continuing on. Here's my tractor door. My tractor door should not be damaged. It should open and close properly from the outside. We're gonna open it up. And we're gonna see that the seal is intact and the hinges are secure. The seal is intact and the hinges are secure. This is our mirror. The mirror should be secure, not damaged, with no loose fittings. This is my fuel tank. My fuel tank is secure. My cap is tight and there should not be any leaks from the fuel tank or the lines. Okay. These are our cab entry steps. They should be solid, clear of objects, and securely bolted to the tractor frame. Right here, we have the exhaust system. The exhaust system should not be damaged, should not have any cracks or holes, should not show any signs of leaks, such as rust or carbon soot. There should not be any severe dents. It should be tightly connected, and mount it securely. This is our frame. The frame should not be should not be cracked, have any broken wells, holes, or any other damage to the frame members or cross members. Underneath, we have our drive shaft. The drive shaft should not be bent or cracked. Coupling should be secure and free of foreign objects. This is our catwalk. Catwalk should be solid, clear of objects. Uh, solid, clear of objects and securely bolted to the tractor frame. All right. Then we have our air and electrical lines. Our air and electrical lines, we're going to listen for leaks. They should not be cut, chafed, spliced, or worn, steel braids should not show through. They should not be pinched, tangled, or dragging against tractor parts. They flow right over here. This is our glad hands. The glad hands should be locked in, locked in place, free of any damage or air leaks. These are our air connectors. Our air connectors should be sealed and in good condition. This is our electrical plug. The electrical plug should be firmly seated and locked in place. This is the header board or the front area of your enclosed trailer. It should be, it should not have any damage. It should be secure and strong enough to contain cargo. 
should not have any damage such as cracks, bulges, or holes. This is our splash guard and our mud flaps. They should not be damaged, they should be mounted securely. So once again, I have rims and tires, rims, tires, and I'll explain exactly the way I did on the front with the exception of these drive axle tires should have a minimum tread depth of 230 seconds. Okay. Versus 430 seconds. Versus 430 seconds that I outlined earlier on the front tires. All the rest of the characteristics of the front tires would be exactly the same here, as well as the rim. But what we also have here, in this space right here, we have our bud spacing. Bud spacing should not be, uh, should not be bent, damaged, or rusted through. They should be evenly, they should be centered, uh, evenly separated, and there should not be any contaminants in the middle of the wheel, in the wheel, such as debris or foreign objects. We have our air ride suspension. Air ride suspension, we're going to check it to make sure it's not damaged or leaking. Underneath, down in here, we have a torque arm. The torque arm should not be damaged and it should be mounted securely. Okay? Also, we have our fifth wheel coupling system. Starting from the top, I have my apron that should not be bent, broken, or cracked. It should be laying flat on my fifth wheel skid plate with no gap. We have a king pin inside. The king pin is being held in place by our locking jaws and it should not be bent or damaged. Our fifth wheel skid plate should be properly lubricated, mounted securely with all bolts and pins secure and not leaking. We have our locking jaws that should be fully closed around the king pin. And lastly, on the other side, we have our release arm. The release arm should be in the engaged position with the safety latch in place. Hold up, hold up, hold up. There's something missing here. Tony just described to you exactly what many people do when it comes to the road test. And when they make this mistake, this is exactly what happens from the examiner. Not really, but you get the point. This is a super serious mistake that many of our students make and I just told you about it. When it comes to the suspension, the tires, and the brakes, most people forget to talk about anything that's behind those tires there because they can't see it. Whether you see it or not, you still have to talk about it. So when it comes to the brakes, you still have the five brake components that we have in the front. Your brake chambers, your slack adjusters and push rods, brake hoses, lines, and couplings, brake drums and brake lining. You don't have to describe everything again. You can just say my brake chambers, I'm gonna check just like I did in the front so on and so forth for the entire part. Same thing with the suspension. Tony mentioned the airbags back there because that's what he could see, but also we're gonna have the, the spring leaves, we're gonna have the spring hangers, the bushings, the U-bolts, uh, and the shock absorber as well. All those items we would inspect just like we did in the front. If you do not mention those items simply because you can't see it, you will not get credit for those items. Now of course this was all planned out beforehand. Tony knows exactly what's going on and he teaches students every single day on make sure that these, these things are not done on the day of the test because that means you will be going home crying. So, let's continue. Okay. All right, so continuing down, we have our landing gear. The landing gear should be fully raised. Should not have any missing parts. Your crank handle should be secure. Your support frame and your landing pads should not be damaged. Okay, moving on, we also have, the trailer also has frame. The frame should not be cracked, have any broken wells, holes, or any other damage to the frame members, or cross members, or your box, or your floor. Okay, moving along. Once again, 
we have a set of wheels and tires. Exactly the same set of same type of wheels and tires with bud spacing and such that we had up front. We would explain wheels, tires, brakes, and all the suspension exactly the same way we did up front. Okay? So moving along. Right here we have our door tie. The door tie should just simply be secure. We also have our uh, we also have clearance lights, red in the back. Uh, we passed a few as we were coming down here. We have an amber one here. But the clearing light, the clearance lights should be the proper color, amber or red in the back. They should be clean and functional, not broken or missing. All right? We also have reflector tape. Reflector tape should be in good condition, clean and functional. All right. Now we finally made it to the back. Let's see how good Tony is in this back area here. Uh, pressure is on. Well, here are my trailer doors. My trailer doors should not be damaged. They should open and close and latch properly from the outside. My chains should be secure. I have my brake light. I also have my turn signals. I also have clearance lights. They should all be clean and functional. Not broken or missing. Since they're on the back, they should all be red. All right, and that, that's what you got for a pre-trip inspection and in-cab inspection. When it comes to the other side of the vehicle, everything will be exactly the same, so we do not even have to talk about that. Now, let me clarify and give you one secret tip if you've been watching to the end for the lights itself. If you want full points on all the lights, which are a good amount of points for your actual test, it's a two-step process. Step number one, you're going to have to do what they call an external light check. We did not show you that here because if we give you everything for free, why would you ever come to school? We've got to leave something for you actually to come on in and take you to the next level, right? So that being said, external light check, you're going to be inside the vehicle. You're going to ask the examiner for uh, assistance to go outside the vehicle, go around the truck to make sure that all the lights are working. Once we know that the lights are working, then during your pre-trip inspection, that's when you go and check each light, even the brake lights in the back. And do not, I repeat, do not say that you have reverse lights in the trailer because that just means that you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. So if you are interested in learning how to get a CDL license and you want to pass your CDL road test the first time and you're interested in going to the best driving school in the entire country, which is Driving Academy, and you want to be trained by Tony and his team on exactly how to pass the very first time on your pre-trip inspection, give us a call, 908-525-3609. We help students from all over the country. The cool thing about coming to our school is we're open up seven days a week, which means we get to work around your train schedule. We offer payment plans. All you need is $500 to get started. We also have guaranteed training courses, which means that's right. We can guarantee that you walk away with a CDL license. So what are you waiting for? Give us a call, 908-525-3609. The other cool thing about our school, like I said before, is that we're going to be the ones who are going to give you the CDL road test ourselves. You don't have to deal with any DMV examiners or any DMV scheduling at all. We'll handle it all for you. It's a one-stop shop. We'll make sure that we treat you like VIP. And like I said, our mission is to help a million people get on the road to freedom. What's more free than getting your CDL license, making more money, and driving where you want to go? So until next time, give us a call, 908-525-3609, and let's get you on the road to freedom. What do you say, Tony? Driving Academy got me on my road to freedom. All right, let's get going. See you soon. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.